Hi folks, I want to get the Triumph front steering and brakes assembled now so that we can put them back on the car. I'll see you in a minute. Right, well, I've got the freshly powder coated pieces here now and all the spares I need to assemble the front brake cylinder which I've got off and also the drive shaft I've actually put together now as you can probably see with its new boots. I did have a bit of trouble because the, uh, the inner and outer gaiters normally are two different sizes, well on this model they are anyway, and what actually they sent me, which unbeknown to me, was one universal one because I bought these at different times and one specific for the car. And uh, what I had to end up doing was the universal one, I had to change over for, for the uh, inner seal because so, it had different places where you can cut it to size. So I've actually had to cut that one down. And the one they sent me for the inner seal was actually the one for the outer seal. So I've had to change it around and also cut that one down a little bit as well. But I think you'll see that uh, everything's turned out all right in the end. And the clips have gone on. And all I will say is that, you know these clips on the, the drive shafts here, which you need a certain compression tool. I mean, I've normally used side cutters before to crimp them up, which I think a lot of us have done. But this time I thought I'd go out and buy the proper tool. And I found this on uh, Amazon, I think it was, and it cost £12. And I thought, brilliant, got the proper top, uh, tool for the job. But guess what? With a lot of the, well, definitely on these two clips, this thing doesn't open wide enough to be able to clamp around the open clip before you squeeze it together. So that turned out to be as good as a chocolate fire guard. I ended up having to start them off with that just to get the initial size down to a size where I could actually open this up. As you can see, they're far too small. I don't think these are adjustable. I've had a look at them, but that's as far as they open up, which is really no good whatsoever for the starting position of them when you need to compress them. So they're no good whatsoever, but the drive shaft is done now. It's all greased up and all back together. So I can put that at the back now. That leaves me with the brake caliper to reassemble. And as you can see there, freshly powder coated, it's all been cleaned out the inside with uh, uh, acetone and there's no grit or anything or anything left uh, inside there. So that's fine. I've got the brand new piston there. I've got the dust seal to go on. I've got the inner seal there. I've got the two slider pins, which will attach to the actual carrier body as well. And the actual slider pins as well, I've got them in another container where I'll bring them around in a minute. And I'd like to thank one of my subscribers who sent me some uh, ceramic brake grease this week. That come yesterday, actually. Ideal for old cars like this, the, uh, and also modern cars as well. And as you can see there, reduces brake pad squeal. Not much on modern cars, I would imagine, but uh, definitely on older cars like this Triumph Acclaim where people used to grease on the back of brake pads to stop squeal. This has got brake pads with a squeal plate on the back, so I may just put a bit on the back of that. But to, to reassemble the actual brakes themselves, they do give you a little tube of rubber grease or red, red rubber grease, I presume that's what's in there. But failing that, a kind subscriber also did send me some red rubber grease as well there. So I've got a, contain a container of that as well. And also I'd like to say happy birthday coming up to Barbara Widow's son. She's a long-term subscriber of mine on all my channels. So happy birthday, Barbara, anyway. Right, let's get this assembled. We'll put the seal in the piston first of all and, and get, it, get this installed. So let's get that sorted out. Okay, so uh, let's get the caliper turned over first. As I said, it's all nice and freshly cleaned. I'll have a look at this grease first of all, see if it is the red grease they give you. Normally it is. And all I'll do there is just oil up just the inside of our caliper. You can do this with um, brake fluid and all, but literally just a thin smear just around the inner edges of the caliper. And also just a little bit in that groove as well. Just edge a little bit in the groove because they can tend to snatch these uh, rubber gaskets and seals when you go to put them in. And the last thing you want is them to grab up sort of thing. So that's that. I'll also apply some to this uh, seal as well. As I say, this is a uh, rubber grease. So I have used different greases in the past and uh, we've had subscribers say, oh, you should be using rubber grease for that. But uh, we are using the so-called right proprietary grease here. But uh, obviously anything is better than nothing at the end of the day. So that's that. And we'll just slip that inside, bearing in mind it's got a square face on it. It should just push in nicely. Just get it in there first of all. 
it shouldn't be too much of a squeeze to get it in there and there we go that's falling in lovely so that's gone in there absolutely a treat as you can probably see there that's the rubber seal now in like everything cleanliness is very important when you're doing something like this so keep your hands clean at all times so i'll now bring the piston forward and i will put a smear over the piston as well again it hasn't got to be too thick it's just to aid it in sliding in it will get a bit slippery i know but uh I'm sure we can handle that. There we go. A little bit in the groove there as well. Because we're going to locate the dust seal around in that top groove there before we put it in. And that's just gone in like that. And I'm just putting a bit of oil around that inner seal as well. Because we've got this ridge here, as you can see, that goes into a ridge which is sitting inside the actual caliper as well. So that's that now done. So I'm hoping to be able to just ease that into the hole. Oh, there we go. It's just gone in. Oh, see, it's gone in lovely now, look. So before I push it all the way in, right, and I'm just going to get a little screwdriver because I just want to locate this and just feed it under. Again, this bit's always easier said than done. So bear with me, I'm not gonna fiddle about with this on here. I'll get it put on, then I'll come back to you. Okay then, that was a bit of a pain to get in. I persevered with it and I managed to get it in by getting a wider bladed screwdriver and just edging down all the way around and holding my hands there and sort of working my way around until it finally went in. I was massaging it like that as well. But as you can see now, it's sitting in now, the piston's now sitting proud and the seal isn't coming up like it was doing before. So then it's in all the way around. So I'm happy with that now. Bit of a nuisance job getting that in properly. Right, so that's that. I've now got the sliding part of the bracket for the caliper and I'm gonna lubricate this. I'll use the red rubber grease again. I don't think it matters. Well, I'll tell you what, I've still got some old stuff left, haven't I? So on these pins, so I'll just put a bit of uh, this on there as well, just to ensure they slide fine. And they're gonna go into there with one of our seals. Are they both the same either end? Yeah, so I can put that over there and that sits in that, again, over that groove there. Might help to put a bit of um, rubber just around the top there, some grease, because it is a rubber seal at the end of the day. Uh, dust cover rather. Keeping your hands clean is the biggest problem here. And yet again, I think I'm gonna need a screwdriver just to get it over where it needs to be and tease it around. So that's the top one on. Sit it nicely on the pin, put a bit more lube on it. There we go. Just to ensure that they do slide in nicely and that one then goes into the orifice there we go and yet again i may i'll push it in first of all and it may pop over but if not i might just have to encourage it over with a little screwdriver to get it started being careful obviously not to uh pierce it and once you get a start you're normally pretty much okay Normally you can push it in and also rotate it as well and that's sometimes, yeah, I just dropped on there, there you go. And that there is just as it needs to be. Nice and lubricated, brand new seal on it. That'll ensure that the caliper won't stick on. I'll do the other side now and I'll come back to you in a second. Right, okay then, here's me new set of pads there as you can see. All ready to go on and they've also got the anti-squill plate on the back of the pads which go on there. Yeah, they do supply four of them. There's one for each pad, obviously. And as I said, I may put a smear of this um, ceramic brake grease underneath the uh, anti-squeal plates just to aid the squealing, which you used to get on sort of 80s cars or older. And uh, in this situation, that's fine. So I'm going to do that a bit later on. So as you can see now, both of these are back in. That's all ready to go. That's all ready to go. The only thing I've got to do is to screw the new um, bleed nipple in there, which I've got there. There we go. I will just lube that thread up as well when I uh, come to put this on properly, but uh, I'll just stick it in there for now. 
And again, we've also got these uh, anti squeal plates, or as the manual calls them, anti rattle plates, because sometimes the calipers, uh, the pads can rattle in the caliper. So they're anti rattle and they're anti squeal. Right, okay then, so we'll put these back in there for the moment. They're ready for assembly out at the car, as well as the brakes. What we've got to deal with now, before we go outside, is the installation of the new bearing there, and also the hub center has got to go through the middle of the bearing. So I've got the bearing over here. Again, this looks like a, a new old stock kit I've got here. And this comes with, I've actually measured these and they're the correct size, so we're happy with that. We've got the actual bearing there, which technically speaking, I should have put in the freezer overnight, but I didn't realize I'd be doing this video today. So we've got one bearing to go in there. We've also got a, a dust seal for either side. So I've just got to make sure I get these in the right order. And also apparently, by what I've read elsewhere, these only go in one way, so I'll have to check on that anyway. So uh, I'll be looking at that, and uh, let's get the new pressing tool out, and let's get moving on this. I stand by you when you're falling, when the river is calling. I said I love you forever, we can make it together. What goes up must be down. That's that all greased up. And there is a difference with the faces on these bearings. One is a lot flatter than the other one is slightly raised, although it's still level. So that end goes in first that way. So I'm gonna to need to ensure that we get the right size tools out of our pressing kit. Let's get that sorted out. If I open our kit up, I need something that's gonna fit directly onto that bearing race there. We've got that one that's going to sit on the front like that. That cup that's going to go on the back there. So if I slide that over there. Take that for our hole. Put that one on there like that. And then we want our large nut wherever that is. That should go on there. But before I do that, I want to lubricate these threads up. They're going to be tightening down quite a bit I would imagine. So the whole purpose of this is to push down on the outer race of the bearing and this cup attaches to the outer side so it's not pushing on any bearing at all it's pushing on the outer surface of this cast iron so that when we tighten this nut down it should pull the bearing in. Just taking up the tension now. Right, okay, so it's reached a standstill there, so it's gone in nice and square as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is clamp this in the vise now, and that'll give me purchase to actually turn this open. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Right, so as you can see, that's the setup we've got now. Everything's as it should be. I can now tighten this down, this nut here, Hold that back there and that should gently pull that bearing in until it can't go in anymore. All right, okay, so we'll just hold back with this one. Now again, this shouldn't be too hard to pull in. So we'll just gently wind it in. Yep, it's going in nicely. So much easier with the right tools. So we now know the bearing. It's fully home, and there's no way you'd do that by hammering it in without making a mess of the bearing, which I've actually done before. So that's the whole reason why I went out and bought this kit. And I must say, it makes life a whole lot easier without the chance of damaging the bearing. 
Right, okay. That's stage one of the operation done. And the objective was to get that in there. And as you can probably see where the snap ring sits into. So that is nice and clear as you can see there. So that's part one done. The back of the bearing is fully latched up on there. And what we've got is a dust seal to go on this side and also a dust seal to go on this side. We've got to get them on first before we push the hub on, otherwise we ain't gonna be able to get the, um, the dust seal on afterwards. So now's the time to get the right dust seal and put that on. There is two, there's two different types there as you can see, one for the front and one for the back. It's a matter of putting the right one in the right hole. These can be tricky little things to put in as well. So uh, here we go. Probably not the right size for this, but uh, we'll try, try these anyway. Oh, that's gone in nice and easy. And once they're in, make sure they revolve as well, just to make sure they are seated, which that one is. So that's now gone in, which is fine. Here's our dust seal, as you can see. Just get a bit of uh, grease out of that, just to go around the edge. This one's the outer one. And again, this should just tap in. I've got a hide mallet there, just to get things going. You can pull this in with that puller as well, but uh, I'm gonna just persevere with this at the moment. Like that, and I have got the insert there just to sit on there, and I can just tap that now. There we go, just to ensure that's gone in properly, which it has. It's sitting nicely now, so that's that one done. I need to get them um, jaw protectors for my vice. Anyone knows where I can get them? I could make a pair, I suppose. Just using cardboard at the moment. So I'm just going to pre let's press this rear one in and then I'll come back to you in a second. Right, okay then. So before we put the rear bearing, uh, rear dust cover in, what we want to do is to get the uh, wheel centre put in from the front. And this time we've got to push this in through the middle race. So we need to support the back of the middle race with a suitable adapter so that when we're pushing in, we're pushing against the middle race this time. So I'm just gonna plonk this on the front. As you can see, that's well greased up in there. Right, that's all greased up as well. So we just locate that, just sit it in there. We're not looking to push it in at the moment. We're just gonna sit it there. I'm going to change the back plate for one that just hits the inner race. I'll stick that through the hole like that and I want the outer one again it's going to sit on the top there so it's pulling in via the center I'm going to put our nut on everything's square at the moment threads are already lubricated up right okay so we're going to hold back on this one and I'm going to start tightening up on the front one and hoping that that starts to pull that center through the middle, which it is doing, and it's pulling it lovely right through the middle without putting any pressure on anything apart where it needs to be. I say really hard to do this, I would imagine, if you haven't got the right tools. And there we go, it's gone right up now. So loosen that one off, off with that. Slide the bolt through. And as you can see, we've got a fantastically fitted hub, which there's no play in whatsoever. And all I've got to do, I can literally just bring it over here now onto a flat surface. I can take our bearing cup, find a suitable cover for it and literally just drift this bearing in happy days job done and there we go job done so this is all the assembly now needed before i can actually fit it to the car i think i'll leave this video here because it's gone on for long enough the next one will be just putting this all together in back into the car including the new um track rod end as well 
and also the new brake hose line as well which we'll be putting in as well anyway hope you've enjoyed this don't forget check out the other triumph acclaim videos if you want to see what other work i've done to the triumph acclaim and uh, if you do enjoy my videos do think about hitting the subscribe button down there and also ringing that little notification bell and setting your preferences to all that means that you'll get notified every time i upload a video and uh, there you go thanks very much hope you've enjoyed this and i'll see you in the next video and until then bye for now